God is the author and the finisher of our faith. And even when we don't see it, he is moving, he is grooving, he is doing all things, working all things together for our good. And we're so glad you're joining us on Hope Today. I'm here with Tom Hollis. I'm here with Anna today, dear Anna. And we are super excited because today it is about you. I know, <laughs> I'm so excited to be able to, to share my story in just a couple of minutes. And uh, we're gonna be, I'm gonna be framing my story all around the war that I've had against fear for most of my life because I know that so many are struggling with fear and anxiety. And so my prayer today is just that through my story, through my experience and what God has taught me, that it will inspire you to step out and be brave. I think that is so good. I can't wait to hear it. I know it's going to be a blessing. I'm glad that God is moving and grooving, by the way. That, that's, uh, <laughs> I'm really happy about that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's so true that we can let fear bind us, let fear wrap us up and, and say, hey, you don't want to do that. You know, it sounds like wisdom, but, uh, and wisdom's good. But a lot of times it's just plain fear. Yeah, there's a lot of times that we're moving in fear, we're walking in fear, but today we want to break that off of you and know that you can walk in the power and the victory and all that you are called to be. And speaking of victory, we just want to give a big shout out to Coco Goff, the 19-year-old who won the U.S. Open. I mean, what an incredible story, what an incredible journey. So many of us are watching over the weekend of her win. And you know, one thing that was so beautiful is that at the end, she got on her knees and prayed. How beautiful is that? And so just even thinking, you know, I've heard some interviews that she was doing talking about, you know, people who doubted her or said, you're not going to make it and look where she is now. So maybe you're in a tennis match. Maybe you're in a match of your life and things are going back and forth. Stay in the game. Hold on to hope. Hold on to Jesus and know that he's right there with you in the match and within it all. I, I, I love that because Tony Dungy, who I follow on Twitter or whatever we call it now, X, <laughs> uh, and uh, he posted that picture of her praying immediately after she won. And, and she has a, a, a practice of praying with her dad, always has, uh, like ahead of their matches and praying together. What a fantastic legacy to leave your daughter, to leave somebody to know Christ that way. Right, absolutely. Yeah, and with prayer, I mean, that constantly positions us back to the proper place that we are underneath God, like all the gifts and the talents and the purpose that he's given us, we constantly owe him credit. And so today, that's really how I want to frame my story. You are our CTVN family, and if you've been with us since I started here, Yesterday was actually my 10 year anniversary of the first time being on air here with uh, being a real life co-host, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So uh, my story really is one of a war against fear because uh, my mom said that I was a very timid little girl. I mean, I always had some fire in me. She could tell you some fun stories about that, but um, and we have a picture of me with my mom, with my family, my dad and my brother. And you can see we're hanging out at Disney World. And I'm just like leaning up against my mom, like always right with the world as long as I have my mom close by. And I know that she's watching today and whoo, she has taught me also how to be brave and how to step out. and. Truly, she said that once I asked Jesus into my heart as a little girl too, like through like middle school and high school, I started to find more courage. And that was really the beginning of where the, the seeds of my purpose in life where it began to be planted by the Lord. So I have to say like, although I gave my heart to Jesus as a little girl, my, my faith was very shallow. Like, as I was thinking about my goals after high school, what I wanted to do whenever I grew up, like there, God was really like, I didn't, I didn't pray. I didn't ask him like, Lord, what do you have for me? I just was really following my heart. And it's cool as you'll hear my story unfold, how God brought me to into the purpose that he had for me, even though I wasn't on that path necessarily right away. And so when I was in high school, I can just remember like watching 
shows like GMA in the morning and thinking like, oh, look at how they get to just greet people in their living rooms in the morning, in their kitchens. They could just get to bring like this joy and this smile to help somebody start their day right. And I was like, that would be so much fun to do. And then I would get home from school and like at four o'clock, Oprah would be on and I would watch her bring these guests on. And she was like a master interviewer. And what a cool opportunity Oprah had to be able to bring people in, give them a platform to share their story, to be able to help them shape the part that would be impactful to somebody who was listening, to inspire somebody, to give somebody hope, to draw a person in. And I was like, that would be such a cool job to sit with people and help them tell their story. Barbara Walters was another one that was just like top of her game. She was a, a forerunner for women in journalism just to interview people and to tell stories. And so I knew from high school that I wanted to go into television. So I went to IUP and I majored in communications, media and journalism. And uh, so I had these big dreams, like whenever I graduated, I was going to move to New York City. I was going to get a job on GMA. I was going to be a career woman, just like crushing it in the media world. Well, as life would have it, I ended up getting married at 20 years old in the middle of my sophomore year. We ended up after graduation settling down in nowhere, Pennsylvania, and I was like, Oh, I had three kids in four years, so I quickly became a stay-at-home mom. There's me with my three littles, or my little ducklings, I call them. And uh, I was about 30 years old in that picture. Um, and I just thought, well, I mean, I love, I'm loving being a mom. I knew that when I had kids, I wanted to stay home. But that just meant like all my dreams of television had gone out the window and you know I just kind of like got at peace with that so I continued on and in those years of my 20s like and into my very early 30s I look at that back at that now as like those were preparation years those were the years where Jesus where I got to encounter Jesus so I joined in assemblies of God church I started into Bible study and the, for the first time, like I did a Beth Moore, for those of you who have done Beth Moore, like she just brought, she helped bring the Bible to life for me. And I can just remember sitting at my kitchen table, I would get up early in the morning before my three kiddos got up and I would just pour over the scriptures and Jesus just like jumped out of these pages at me and I encountered him for the first time. Like I met the Jesus who loved me and who was there for me. I started learning about my identity in Christ and who, who I was in him, not my identity as a mom, not my identity as a wife, not my identity as anything else, but a daughter of God and how he has made us his masterpiece. The Bible says we are his masterpiece created in Christ Jesus for good works that he prepared in advance. And he started stirring my spirit that there was so much more. And in that time, I just really, I learned scripture. I grew in my relationship with God. And a powerful illustration that I remember hearing in my younger years as a young adult was, um, somebody was speaking about fear and I was already like, I was still having battles with fear and stepping out and being brave. And they put in front, like they put up on the screen, a picture of a bonsai tree. So like, do you guys know what a bonsai tree? Okay. Yes, I've seen Karate Kid. I, I, know I was what just going to say, for is. those of you who have like watched Karate Kid, like Mr. Miyagi, and he's like trimming the little branches and keeping it all cute and small and like a little container. And then the other picture that this speaker showed was of the big, tall, mighty oak tree. And the Bible says in Isaiah 61 that they will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. And so I was thinking like, 
God has made me to be a tall, mighty oak where my roots spread out, where I can stand strong against any storm that I don't need to fear. And yet the way that a bonsai tree is maintained is that the owner actually will like take the bonsai tree out, keep trimming the roots so to keep it small and also will keep it in a shallow container and will keep trimming the branches. And I just, he was talking about how fear is like that. Like if we allow fear to own us, to keep controlling us, that it's constantly clipping away at those roots that God wants to grow down deep into the soil of his word where we are planted by streams of living water. And it just really started to resonate with me. And so fast forward then um, about 2008, I, there was a group of us women um, around the Murraysville area. And one of the ladies said, wouldn't it be awesome to start a MOPS group? It stands for Mothers of Preschoolers. And so there was a team of us that was excited to like launch this group that was for moms, um, but they didn't have a coordinator. And I was like, that sounds like a fun job. I would love to be the coordinator of this group. And um, so our first year we had 30 women. And let me tell you, although I was so excited because I believe God put that desire in me to step out and lead to launch this group that would impact over the years, hundreds of women. Like that first year we had 30 women and that was my first encounter with experiencing paralyzing fear. And so here I am like day one of this MOPS meeting. We're supposed to start at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. comes around and I am nowhere to be found. <laughs> Do you know where I was? Any guesses? I was in the bathroom, <laughs> head between my knees, like hyperventilating because I could not get out in front of those 30 women to welcome them to the MOPS group and to start like, you know, facilitating this meeting. And so I remember we had these mentor moms, these older women. And so she's like, Anna, you can do this. Like you can do this. You can stand in front of those 30 women and welcome them. So I was like, all right, here we go. And so uh, that was really like, God's first place of where I said yes and I stepped into something that felt so much bigger than myself and I had to trust that God would meet me there and help to grow me through that and he did. So through those years of ministering to women like that's where God brought my purpose back on track where I fell in love with the hearts of women like I knew during that time that God had called me to minister to women, to care for the hearts of women. And so I was part of that for 10 years. And in those 10 years, they uh, encouraged me to go and speak at other MOPS groups and other women's groups. And I was like, okay, I mean, I don't, okay. So here we go. And I had my second encounter with paralyzing fear of like, I just could not, it was so hard to get myself up there on that stage. And um, it was then that I was like, all right, fear, I am so done with you. I'm so done with you holding me back, keeping me down, like paralyzing me. Like what? This is not okay. I have a big, mighty God that is for me. And uh, so I came up with this little like strategy to start overcoming fear. And if you like to take notes, like this is a great place to take notes. That's simply this, speak truth, pray truth, live truth. Because here's the thing, the enemy wants to constantly whisper in your ears, like, who do you think you are? You've got nothing to offer. Like, remember where you came from. Like, you can't do this. And so we have to get the truth of God's word speaking louder in our ears about who God says we are so that that truth overcomes the voice, the lies, the whisper of the enemy. So I took, 
Isaiah 41.10. This is a phenomenal scripture for those of you who struggle with fear. And it says this, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Do not fear for I am your God. And so I put that on a note card, like on the dashboard of my car and like the whole drive to my speaking engagement, I would just be like, I will not fear because God, you are with me. I will not be dismayed. He just holds me with his righteous right hand. And I would just like speak it. I would pray it, I would turn into prayer. And then you know what? Whether that fear went away or not, I just went out and I lived the truth that my God is with me, that he is for me, that he has gone ahead of me to prepare this place for me to step into, to live into my purpose. So I continued on with this bravery and at one of the speaking engagements, it was a mother-daughter banquet, there were a few women in the audience that worked at Cornerstone Television. And so after the speaking engagement, the, these women came up to me and Amanda Brocker was one of them. Uh, and Linda Wilson was another. And so I think it was Amanda actually that was like, hey, you have any interest in working at Cornerstone Television? Like we're gonna be starting some new programs. They're looking for some women to come audition. It's a show called Sister to Sister. It's like The View, but from a Christian perspective, I was like, are you kidding me? I've always wanted to work in television. And so it was like an instant yes. I didn't even have to pray about it. But let me tell you, that was my next paralyzing encounter with fear because I showed up. There were like 50 women in this room. They were like pastors, ministry leaders, like high powered women in the Pittsburgh area. And I'm a stay at home mom. Like what? am I doing here? How did I get into this place? And so again, this was just the time where God was like, he had to push me out. And so through the series of auditions and callbacks, I ultimately didn't get picked for sister to sister. But then the president at the time came up and he's like, how would you like to be one of my co-hosts on the morning show called Real Life? And I was like, my gosh, I get to be like Katie Couric. I get to like <laughs> say good morning to people and welcome people. And I get to talk about Jesus, which by that time I was so passionate about Jesus. And that's all I wanted to do was be able to talk to people about Jesus and what he could do in their lives. And so that was an easy yes. And like I said, 10 years ago was my start here on Cornerstone and just to see how it has evolved and uh, the, the team here, I just have to say, and they're like sitting all around me right now. And Dave Tucker, who is the executive producer, like he's, all of them in their own way, they've just been like mentors. Like they saw something in me that would be effective on television. And uh, I remember at the beginning wanting everything to be scripted out, like the teleprompter was my safety place. And Dave was like, okay, we'll let you use that. It'll be like training wheels for a little while, but then we're gonna start taking those training wheels off. And so time after time, just being pushed out beyond my comfort zone so that I can step into the next level of what God has for me. And friends, that's my message to you today. Like whatever Red Sea, whatever obstacle is in front of you with your purpose, or maybe you have a medical diagnosis or a financial situation or relationship issues, or your kids are not where you want them to be. Fear comes in so many different ways or you're watching the news and you see where our world is. Fear can hold us back and keep us small. But when we know who our God is, when we know what he has infused into us through his Holy Spirit to help us step out and be brave, like we are not on this earth for ourselves. We are here to be a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. So my prayer again through sharing my story today is that you will be brave. Whatever is holding you back today, set it at the feet of Jesus and embrace him. He says, do not fear for I am with you. You are mine. 
He has gone before you and he is all around you. And he is making that path for you to go and be extraordinary. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh, Great story. That is good. He's so good. I love how God brought that, the, the, brought your vision from yes. way when you were young all the way back around from watching Good Morning America to That's being right. on in the morning I in know. America. And I get to be here at Cornerstone Television and this truly is a place where Jesus is the center. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing, Anna. Yeah, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about what happens when God pours out his spirit on us like he did on Anna, like he wants to do on you and me. We'll be right back. Every now and then, life gets the best of us, and we need a reminder to keep calm and trust God. Simple but striking, the Keep Calm and Trust God box of blessings provides messages of reassurance to help carry you through tough and challenging times. These small cards fit into the palm of your hand and will turn your focus to the one who is in control of everything. Inside, you'll find 51 colorful double-sided cards featuring a combination of inspirational scripture verses and faith-based quotes. Add it to a get well basket or use it to encourage a teacher, family member, or friend, or save it for the times you need encouragement. Be sure to ask for the Keep Calm and Trust God box of blessings when you give today. It's our way of saying thanks as you encourage others by providing life-changing Christian television through Cornerstone TV. Call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. Well, we are on day 15 of our uh, uh, just praying together and believing for great things for uh, ourselves, for our families, for God to pour out in our city. That's what we're praying about today, day 15. By the way, next Monday, we're having at 8 p.m. Uh, a prayer program that you will want to be part of on the 18th at 8 p.m. All the hosts will be here and uh, we'll be praying together. So uh, today's scripture, we have a scripture for every day. It says this, it's Joel 2, 28 and 29. It says, it will come about after this that I will pour out my spirit on all mankind and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. And even on the male and female servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. So think about that. And I, I love this, that God's got something for everybody. When the Spirit's poured out, it's not just poured out on the leaders. It's not just poured out on the pastor. It's not just poured out on the elders. It's poured out on everybody. In fact, our sons and daughters will prophesy. What a, what a, what a promise. Uh, I, I know for, for me, uh, Anna, uh, you know, you have kids, not yet, but yeah. so, sooner or later. You know? yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you want the, the, the Spirit of God to be poured out on your kids, and you want the, 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 the uh, I've got grandkids now, and I pray for that. And here's a promise that this is gonna happen. And, and they're not only just gonna receive, they're gonna minister out of that. They're gonna prophesy. You know, I, I tend to, skip over the uh, old men will have dreams part, you know, uh, I'll just go straight to the young men will see visions, all of that, uh, that God wants that. And he wants that not just for our own personal benefit. It does do that because we get to know who God is, but it then we launch out from that into what he wants to say to our generation, to our, our time, to our city, to our region all those things. Sydney, give me your thoughts on this. You know, as you were speaking, this God just really dropped in my spirit is that a lot of times I think we look at the Holy Spirit, it's like he's not a theoretical, he's tangible, that we have access to the Holy Spirit. And I know depending on, you know, I know there's different denominations and different things, but the truth of the matter is that God calls us to walk in spirit and in truth and reminds me of a very powerful point in Anna's story about when you said to speak truth, to pray truth, to live truth. There is a spirit of truth. There's a spirit of worship. There's a spirit of freedom. That's what the Holy Spirit is about. And so when you begin, I just encourage you something that, you know, when I was growing up, like I heard of the Holy Spirit, but didn't fully understand everything. And I know this is a very common scripture, but when is the last time that you've prayed to the Holy Spirit? Do you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit? The moment I just started praying to the Holy Spirit, talking to the Holy Spirit, I was like, you are my friend. You are beside me. You are my compass. You are my comforter. Something transformed in my life. 
that I started dreaming, that I was able to have prophetic utterances. I was able to see things in a different dimension, in a different place, and because it, he wants to manifest through us, right? And so that we can make changes in our communities. Like even Anna, when I think of your story, is like that, you know, the change agent that you're in your family, the change agent you were among, among women, the change agent that you are even here on this program, the show in Cornerstone. This is what the Holy Spirit does inside of us. It is an awesome, awesome thing. So I just wanna encourage you today as we're on our 21 days of prayer, pray to the Holy Spirit, talk to Holy Spirit, get to know Holy Spirit. He knows you and you need to get to know him so you can walk in the fullness of your purpose and who you are called to be. Anna, what are your thoughts? I was so glad that you said about the Holy Spirit because that was another part I was thinking preparing today is that the Holy Spirit changes everything. I grew up in a church that really gave me the foundations of God and Jesus of the Bible, but they did not teach about the Holy Spirit. And then when I started going to an Assemblies of God church that was all about the Holy Spirit, I was like, my gosh, I can't believe I've been missing this my whole life to know that he is the power of God in us. Like what an incredible thing as New Testament believers that we get to have the Holy Spirit living in us. Like the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living on the inside of us to empower us. Like we don't have to do this life on our own and he wants to reveal God to us. He wants to empower us in our purpose and our calling. He wants to give us prophecies and visions and dreams. And this is all through the power of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, just speaking of our daughters and our sons, like as parents, as grandparents, like let's be speaking life into our kids and telling them about, the, about God and what he has put in them and that they have the ability to go out and be filled with the Holy Spirit to be able to make change in this earth. And it doesn't matter where you are, who you are. You say, well, hey, I don't, I'm, I'm not up on the pulpit on Sunday. I'm, I'm not on TV like you. Hey, you are one of the ones that the Spirit's being poured out. It says even the male and female servants. So anywhere, any job, anything, any, whether you're uh, at a service job, whatever you're doing, God's pouring out His Spirit on you too. Walk in that, believe that, trust in that, and speak that. You know, as you're talking, it's just like, there's a song that's in my spirit. I'm just singing this. It's like, Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all you want. We want. Wow. <laughs> You're all we want. Holy Spirit, we are all we want. Let that be the cry of your heart today. Holy Spirit wants to dwell with you. He wants to be with you. He wants to sit beside you. He wants to nurture you. He wants to speak to you and through you. So invite the Holy Spirit into your home today.